Hi guys, welcome to Antique Sprinklers. You know, I let it slip this morning that we were going to be talking about Rain, uh, Rainbird Impact, and uh, these guys escaped from the basement, and now they won't leave. Yeah, but you're filthy. You even still have frosting from Rainbird's 90th anniversary birthday cake on you. Good lord. I know. I just thought you were cool. Oh, where are you gonna go? Yeah, well, uh, enjoy Iowa around 1965. Good riddance. <sighs> All right, well, let's get on with it, shall we? Oh, man. Those 95s and 100 Bs, so temperamental. You keep them locked in the basement for months on end and you can't bring them out in front of polite company. All right. So what we're here to talk about today actually is a uh, Rainbird 27 AP. It's a, uh, a pop-up impact rotor, adjustable part circle. And uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's part of the legacy that, that Orton uh, Engelhardt started when he invented that, uh, that impact that um, revolutionized agricultural irrigation. Around 1940, uh, Rainbird got the idea to uh, put these things underground so, uh, so that they could be, you know, um, installed flush with surrounding turf and they could pop up and sprinkle and then get back out of the way. So if you're on an athletic field or a golf course, you don't have to uh, dodge the risers with the impacts on them or the roller bases or uh, anything like that. And um, from the bat, they were designated the 21, 31, 41, 51. That was the, the sprinkler series, and they've they've stuck with that. And uh, that was something I was talking about with a, a fellow uh, sprinkler enthusiast um, not long ago. And it's the idea. One of the really nice things about Rainbird is you can you can draw a straight line from where they are today back to uh, back to the 1930s with uh, Clement and Orton, you know, founding the company. Uh, unlike uh, most of the companies in the irrigation industry, you know, sure you can say that Hunter and K Rain are, are still uh, essentially the same company they they were when they were founded, but those are two companies from the 1980s. You know, Rainbird is a pre-war company, and so it's really great to uh, to be able to trace you know the line of a of a sprinkler from its inception, you know, back in 1940 uh, through to today. Um, and so this guy, they, they started in 1940 with a, uh, a brass case, uh, as I mentioned, and um, then sometime uh, perhaps in the late 50s or, or maybe around 1960, they switched to putting these in a, a cast iron case, and you'll see the, uh, this shape emerge as well. And uh, they, they remained in the cast iron case for the next couple of decades. They did in the 1970s introduce a... Uh, a variant that had a check valve in it called the uh, Stopomatic. That's that SAM that you see in uh, in Rainbird sprinklers. And uh, the intent there is, if you have a sprinkler that's kind of in a low spot at a lower elevation than where it's um, where than where the the lateral begins, or you know, um, they'll tend to drain after the zone turns off. And so the idea is, you want to avoid the erosion that can happen around the head. And you don't want to waste water, so the check valve will hold back uh, a certain uh, amount of feet of head and keep that lateral full of water and not have it drain out of the nozzle after the zone turns off. Um, and so those were plastic, but these guys, I don't see them in this shape uh, without the check valve in plastic uh, in my 1970s um, Rainbird catalogs. Uh, so I'm guessing that in the 80s, maybe as a cost-saving move, they came up with this AP option, which is what the, the plastic is uh, designated. So this is a uh, 27 AP. And, uh, and, and with that though, it kept the same shape. And about this shape, you know, this, uh, the same fellow I mentioned earlier, he and I were t uh, corresponding and, um, you know, he made the observation that, uh, or it might've been another guy actually, he made the observation that if you take a look at say the Buckner pop-up impact rotors, and a lot of other brands as well. They had sort of a, 
I don't know, the body of it was more, it looked like a cone that had been sort of pinched at the bottom rather than having this sort of like step down uh, design. And then uh, after Royal Coach bought back Buckner, if you look at Buckner impact rotors, they've got this shape. There's gotta be something in, uh, in the engineering around them that is an advantage. Maybe it's the amount of materials used. I don't know for sure, but if anybody does, please leave a comment. And, uh, you know, I would even open, be open to hearing arguments that maybe, you know, M Moody's large impact rotors uh, of an earlier era were, were of this design um, ahead of Rainbird. Uh, you know, so if you've got knowledge about that, I, I would be, definitely be interested. That's one of the things that I love about doing these is there's a lot of people out there that know a heck of a lot about the uh, American irrigation industry and and its history and and so i've been learning um tons and tons and tons of new stuff um one thing that i really appreciated about the cast iron variants of these um when i was selling golf irrigation i would occasionally run into a uh one of the one of the more mom and pop kind of uh golf courses up say in the uh, rural areas of central pennsylvania or somewhere like that and they might have, you know, 4151s or something around their greens and something smaller maybe around their tees, still manual, uh, and quick couplers sent a row down their fairways. And they really weren't ever going to be able to make any kind of a big investment in irrigation. But, you know, back in, in, in the, certainly in the 80s and into the 90s, there were um, companies out in California you could send the, the old cast iron impact rotors to, and they'd come back to you like new. Um, you'd get all new seals on, on the uh, internal, um, you would get the spring tension adjusted, uh, frequently they'd replace the nozzle so you'd be back to, you know, factory spec, uh, they'd replace other uh, parts that were showing excessive wear, um, and then, you know, the, the cast iron sprinkler would come back completely painted, I guess it was a vinyl paint they put on those things, um, and they looked just beautiful, and so, uh, so these courses that were never really going to put much money into their irrigation could get some new sprinklers. And even with the cost of shipping cast iron um, across a continent twice, it still ended up being, you know, less expensive for them to go buy, you know, brand new golf rotors and put them in. And the Rainbird Impact is a, uh, a very quality product. So having a brand new one of those in the ground um, is a, a desirable condition to be in. I even think that those uh, early projects where I sent, um, you know, sprinklers out to be refurbished and then would see them coming back looking so nice um, might have been the reason why today I, I really take a lot of uh, enjoyment out of um, getting sort of a, a dinged up, you know, crusty brass sprinkler in the mail and then uh, making it look as close to new as I possibly can. That, I think we should probably cut this off and go straight to watching this in operation. Thanks.
Hi guys. Today we're going to take my Rainbird 31 uh, pop-up impact rotor and convert it, which is a full circle, and convert it into a Rainbird 27, which is an adjustable part circle sprinkler. Um, you see here the internal for the 27. Pretty nifty. Uh, Frank Norsey at uh, Sprinkler Innovations uh, refurbished this guy, and uh, it just it looks great. And I actually got the whole bit from it, so you look in here. Yeah. <laughs> There's an acorn from when I was running it outside. And that's the, uh, we've got the 31, it's the 31A internal. And um, we're going to take this guy apart appropriately and swap internals and then do a video of it running. All right, so the uh, 31 internal had a screen at the bottom. There we go, had a screen at the bottom. And uh, I am not going to move that over to the 27 because we're running uh, this on the domestic water supply here uh, in my house in Maryland. And uh, anything that that would catch would choke me while I'm getting a drink of water. So that hasn't happened yet. So I'm not gonna move it, but um, these things are just a marvel of engineering. I, I love these sprinklers. You can see this has the diffuser screw in it. And uh, number 14, which I'm gonna guess is 764 ths I think that those numbers are based on, or 730 seconds, I mean. I think they're based on 64 ths So let's get on with it. 